That's right. I'm alive! Word is out. Ben is back. Welcome to another episode of Only Murderers in the Building, Season 3, Episode 2. Review, Merle Streep joins a third season of Only Murders in the Building that is heavy on melancholy, light on laughter. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. The third season of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building isn't precisely a drama, and I wouldn't say it marks a significant turning point for a show whose mere name is a reference to death and the pain it brings. The anxiety was shown as a crucial supporting character in the first season, which had a well-constructed mystery and a fizzy shouts and murmurs humorous sensibility. The comedy in season three is an awkward mix of frantic callbacks and inconsistent insider baseball theater jabs, and the mystery is only marginally engaging, so the anguish needs to take the lead. That has always been a part of the program, but it is delicately calibrated. When we last left off, Oliver Putnam was in the midst of directing a Broadway revival of a play that just so happened to be a murder mystery when his star, Ben, played by Paul Rudd, passed away on stage on opening night. Is the murderer a cast member? Maybe Ashley Park's social media influencer Kimber or Jason Vesey's backup Jonathan, the partner of Michael Cyril Creighton's Howard, Oliver's assistant. Could Mabel be the one to unravel the riddle herself, with Oliver obsessed with reviving his now-stalled show at any cost and Charles struggling with worry over both his new relationship and the demands of live theater? As a documentarian who was filming a movie on Ben at the time of his passing, Tobert, Mabel may have her own distractions in the form of insecurities and a flirtation with him. How about Loretta, a longtime underdog actress whose big break came in her late career but was threatened by fights with Ben? What about co-star Charles, who was brought out of semi-retirement by the popularity of the murder podcasts from previous seasons, or his girlfriend Joy? Ben was such a jerk that, in classic Agatha Christie fashion, there are many suspects. In fact, each episode essentially focuses on just one suspect, sometimes with that suspect's voiceover narration in a way that, more frequently than it should, evokes comparisons to Apple TV Plus S The After Party. The design ensures that after 38 minutes, if an episode begins with one suspect, they will be identified as a red herring. Despite Rudd's game efforts in the newest iteration of a movie star jokingly playing a version of themselves on television, it's difficult to show much interest in Ben's life or death. Oddly enough, given the caliber of the ensemble, only murder's comedic aspect is suffering the most. Jokes in the new season frequently refer to topics that have already been joked about, continuing a tendency that was fairly noticeable in the second season as well. Thus, it isn't so much humorous that Charles starts to suspect Joy of being the murderer as it is funny that this is the second time in the series that Charles has started to suspect his girlfriend of being the murderer. And Mabel is stuck making jokes about all the jokes she's made in the past about the age disparity in their podcasting trio, presumably because Charles and Oliver have run out of specific things to be Luddites about. Why is the new season still entertaining enough for a tepid recommendation if it isn't as humorous as it could be or as mysterious as it could be? And don't even get me started on all the characters that have been brought back from previous seasons with decreasing returns. Because, as I just mentioned, it works well as drama. There is a lovely sadness to these two individuals who are beset by disappointment and attempting to remember what it was like to fall in love, despite the fact that the coupling of Short and Streep shouldn't work as a timid love tale. Short's performance of Oliver and his yearnings without using obvious jokes is needlessly avoided by the show. My favorite aspect of the series has generally been Gomez and her perfect sarcasm. Mabel's anxiety at approaching 30 without a solid career, a stable home, or a stable love life is made worse by this season. Given that Mabel spends a significant portion of the season feeling hurt and irritated by those around her, it's easy to identify with Gomez's drab, worn-out performance. Charles has always been motivated by regrets, so there is less here that is novel for Martin now that he has demonstrated his ability to play the romantic lead role in season 1 and the father role in season 2. He now has to deal with more of the physical humor the writers previously gave to Short, and I wish I had liked it more. Martin's best sequences don't involve Short, Gomez, or Andrea Martin. Rather, they occur in an episode when Jackie Hoffman's perpetually fantastic portrayal of grumpy neighbor Uma takes center stage. Only Murder stood out at first because of how many things it was attempting and how many of them it was succeeding at. At this moment, it's trying to do even more things, but it can only do one or two of them well. However, it may be sufficient for the time being, if not in the long run. Thank you for watching.